Hi friends, welcome to this session. In this presentation, we will be dealing with establer fractures. So, this presentation will be slightly different from the usual lectures. In this, we will not deal with the clinical features and all other things. What we have understood from our interactions with residents is that establer fractures is perceived to be a complex subject and hence residents do not show much interest in learning about them. It is also because of the fact that the injuries as such are rare and not many institutes deal with them. So I thought that in this presentation we will try to take care of all the issues that a resident faces when he comes across a establer fracture. The first and foremost is to make the classification system pretty simple so that all of us will be able to classify any fracture by the end of this presentation. And let's have a clear thought process about the surgical management. The biggest issue is which fractures require surgery and then which approach is required for which type of fractures. So both of these should be clear by the end of this lecture. So when we come across establer fractures, we get little confused. For example, in this case, the fracture seems to be pretty simple, but the head is dislocated. In this, the fracture is simple, but the femoral head looks to be in the joint. And in this case, although the fracture looks little complicated, complex pattern, but the femoral head looks subluxated or dislocated. So what exactly happens in a establer fracture? and why it happens so. Let us try to understand that. When we have a look at the establer fractures radiology, we get little confused. In this, we see that the fracture is there and femoral head, we are unsure whether it is dislocated or not. But when we get the other views, the oblique views, we not understand where exactly the fracture line runs. Here, we were sure that there is a fracture, but where did the fracture go missing of the same patient when an oblique view is taken? We cannot recognize any fracture pattern in this. And when the other oblique is taken, it looks so grotesque that the fracture is totally displaced and the head is dislocated. So the same patient, the frame fracture pattern, but different view is giving us different understanding and hence it becomes difficult for us to exactly know what is happening. That is the problem most of us face in understanding an establer fracture. So if we deal with the surgical anatomy, the establer fracture, the establum anatomy can be described in the shape of a lambda. So we have a long vertical, which is the anterior aspect and a smaller posterior aspect which is holding the cup within itself. So we have the anterior and the posterior holding the establer cup in between. That is virtually all that is establum. So a longer anterior column and a relatively smaller posterior column holding on to the establer cup which will have the femoral head. So in this schematic diagram, Whatever is shaded in yellow is part of anterior process. So that is anterior column, a part of anterior wall. And whatever is shaded in violet is a part of posterior part of the lambda. That is posterior column and the posterior wall. Please understand that the interim part between the anterior and the posterior, which forms a part of the obturator foramen has taken both the supports from the anterior as well as the posterior and then we have the sciatic buttress which mostly is from the anterior part. So this is once again the same schematic representation. We have the longer anterior part and the smaller posterior part from the back and when we look at, at it from the front, we have the similar anterior column going on to the ischium, going on to the iliac and the posterior going on to the ischium. Talking about the radiology, what all views do we get when there is a suspected establer fracture? 
the standard anteroposterior view imaging is all that is required to understand most of the fracture patterns. What do we make in that? To make understand the fracture, we need to draw a few lines which we need to be aware of. And once those lines are drawn, we can presume and understand what all structures are damaged in the estabulum and hence be able to classify it. So the first line that we draw is called the iliopectineal line. So it is along the superior border of the superior pubic rami going upwards that is the iliopectineal line. It is much easier to draw it retrograde that is starting from the lower part and going upwards. So this denotes anterior column. Iliopectineal line is anterior column. The next line that we draw is the ilioischial line. So in this we draw from the inferior pubic rami obturator foramen going on upwards. So even in this case it is much easier to draw it from below upwards. So that is ilioischial line and this denotes the posterior column. The next line that we draw is the anterior wall. So the easier way to do this is start from the inferior border of the superior pubic rami, go towards the joint and then we can see a line going upwards which is the anterior column. Although the line is drawn for understanding purpose from the inferior border of the pubic rami but the anterior column is only within the joint and this so called dotted line is not a part of the anterior column. It is only for us to understand where to draw a line otherwise it becomes difficult if we try searching for the line within the joint. So that is the anterior wall and then we move on to the next line which is the posterior wall. Here once again start from the posterior border, the inferior border of the inferior pubic rami and then near the joint we can draw a line going that fashion which is the posterior wall. Once again the wall is only within the joint and this part is for better understanding as to where to draw the line. So when an asked in your exams do not try to draw the entire line, draw only that line within the joint. This is with respect to anterior wall and posterior wall. So if these structures are broken, we understand that the respective entities are fractured. And then we have the weight bearing dome. This is an imaginary line which is directly in relationship with the superior part of the femoral head. And as the name suggests, it takes the maximum weight when the patient walks or is loading the joint. And this has to be significantly congruous for them not to develop pain and early arthritis. And then we have the teardrop, not so much relevant with respect to fracture estabulum, but as completion sake, these are the six things that we draw. That is iliopectineal line denoting anterior column, ilioischial line denoting posterior column, we have the anterior wall line, the posterior wall line, the weight bearing dome part and the teardrop.